Hello, good afternoon. Today I will be presenting you my portfolio and I want to start off with my project one economic outlook by saying that right now the economy is in a period of expansion. This is because GDP keep, keeps increasing and it has been doing so for nine years now. Inflation keeps a constant rate, which is good. Unemployment rate is low, another good thing. Coincident indicators such as national income and non farm payrolls are uh, also back up that the economy is expanding because these two indicators have been increasing as well. Lagging indicators like average weekly hours for employees shows that show that the economy is set to keep increasing in the future, although it's hard to indicate when will the economy reach a peak and then a contraction, which, which happens in every business cycle and the economic cycle. The economy has demonstrated that monetary and fiscal policy have created a healthy economy since the last recession because these policies have aimed at sustainable productivity and growth. All these past facts are good signs for many industries to perform good, but the industries which I believe will provide superior returns based on my forecast are the software and services, ser software and service industry and the healthcare equipment and services. The software and services industry because they lie under the IT sector and in times of expansion it is said that the information technology sector tends to outperform other sectors and in this case is not the exception because information technology has the highest year-to-date returns out of all other sectors according to Bloomberg. And the software and service industry within this sector has 6.23% of year-to-date gains, which is higher than the returns of its sector. For the healthcare and equipment industry, I believe it shows a high growth due not only for being part of a growing economy, but also because the population is growing and people is aging steadily, thus creating more, more healthcare jobs, facilities, equipment and services. According to the healthcare management, the number of people aged 65 and older is projected to grow by 40% between 2012 and 2022. The numbers are huge and because the older humans get, the more vulnerable the health problems they are, the, the health problems they arise, the more vulnerable they are, sorry. And consequently, a high growth rise on the demand for this industry will continue in the future. In the equity section, uh, I will talk about the three securities which I will invest. Uh, the first one is St the Stedis Company, which is a leading provider of infection prevention and procedural products and services, which, is, which focuses primarily on critical markets of healthcare and pharmaceutical. Microsoft is the other one, which is an American multinational technology company, and Adobe which is another multinational computer software company. For a Steady's company, I believe uh, this is a good investment because from uh, the stock valuation that I did on Excel, EPS forecast shows that the future price for Steady's is 199. Um, its current price is around 96. This is a big increase and I believe, and I believe the EPS forecast shows 199 of uh, its future price because um, the expected EPS um, for next year it's expected to increase almost uh, twice its uh, current EPS. And the sales forecast shows that the future price is 99.71, which is an increase of three dollars or so. Um, from uh, the key stats. Price to earnings for Steadies is a lower, way lower than uh, its industrial average. Uh, Steadies has a 33.4 and the industrial average price to earnings is 125.5. Um, I believe this, in this case, I believe is, uh, it shows undervaluations for, uh, for this company because the, the company ROI, it's, uh, way higher, almost the double of uh, the industrial average. It's four, it's five, and uh, the industrial average ROI it's 2.7. So I believe um, the assets are returning more, way more money than the, than the industry average. And uh, return on equity, it's also higher than the 
uh, industrial average. Uh, the industrial average is 5.7 and the ROE for steris is 8.3. So I believe these are good signs that um, they are doing good on returning uh, their investors. Uh, also net income growth, although negative, it, uh, it has a negative of um, minus 5.3 for the three for a three year average that's for the company and then the industry average is minus 18.0 so i believe this company is doing way better than uh, many other of uh, companies in the industry the other company is microsoft which um, which key stats doesn't show actually do not show um really uh, bad signs um the price to earnings is 63.2 uh, compared to the industry average which is 58.8 um the return on average is lower than industry average uh, but the return on equity is higher than the industry average i choose this um this company because i believe from past uh, history this uh, company has always his, its growth has been exponential through the years so it hasn't it's it actually like kind of uh follows the index so it has a beta of 1.1 i believe so it kind of follows the index so that's why i followed um that's why i wanted to invest in microsoft i, I believe it's a great company um uh, which is uh, good valuated and i believe it will get uh, constant returns the other uh, company which i wanted to invest is adobe which uh, surprised me actually a lot because compared to the industry um, they have a return on assets of 13.4 and the industry average has 3.1 that's um, almost that's almost that's more than three times the industry average return on assets so i believe it's a huge um, fact that a huge positive fact for adobe the return on equity it's 23.2 and the industry average has a 6.7 this is another huge positive fact for uh, towards adobe and it's in net income growth this is what impressed me the most has a 84.8 um three year average that's a three year average and its industry it's 2.4 so that's a lot of uh, net income growth for the last three years in average uh, this is why I uh, think this is a great con company to invest in. Um, for the valuations on Excel, EPS forecast shows a future price of 296. The stock is currently being traded at 226. So that's a, that's a big increase because again, EPS uh, forecast shows that uh, this, um, EPS next year's gps eps expectations are higher so that's why i believe it's 296 and the self sales forecast shows a future price of 228 which is an increase of two dollars for fixed income i decided to invest on uh, treasury bonds um, this uh, this bond is correlated by fluctuation on the interest rate so if interest rates rise the price of the bond will fall or vice versa so the coupon rate is three percent for this treasury bond and it is paid semi-annually therefore it pays thirty dollars a year or fifteen dollars twice a year the yield to maturity is three point uh, three point one and it's not callable i decided to do a treasury bond because they have really high credit qualities for being uh, uh, issued by the government and um, it is they also are exempt from paying taxes at a state and local level another bond um, another um, fixed income asset uh, that i will invest in will be t wheels uh, the current coupon rate is 2.13 percent it has a maturity of 52 weeks and the face value is, is only paid at maturity as well as interest yeah, as well as interest sorry this tb will pay face value plus 21.33 at, uh, at maturity uh, this bonds rating is triple a so the highest and um i i, I wanted to invest in this because tbills are very secure and accessible and um, the only thing is because they're short maturities 
um, they also have uh, low lower returns, but they are also very they have almost no risk. Um, another bond, another the last uh, fixed income asset will be a corporate bond, and it's from Netflix. And the maturity for the Netflix bond, which is not callable, is 10.5 years, yielding at 5.12%. And um, if it is whole to maturity, of course. And uh, it also will, will be paying a semi-annual coupon of 4.8%, meaning that the face value is uh, a 1,000, then the coupon will be 48.75, right? And uh, for mutual... For mutual funds, the first mutual fund is American Funds Capital Income Builder. Uh, it has a turnover of 70%, uh, which in the case of a mutual fund, it indicates that 70% of the fund's holdings have been replaced over 12 months, suggesting that this fund is uh, being actively managed. Uh, the three-year return was 2.42% for the fund. Um, the five-year return was 4.6%. Uh, the funds beta uh, for the three year periods uh, is uh, 1.69 and um, the sharper radio for the three and five year of the, uh, for the fund is uh, 0.43 and 0.62 respectively. The funds standard deviation were 7.75 for the three year period and 7.88 for the five year period. They actually decreased much after the 10 year period, which was 12.55, uh, which indicate a reduction of volatility in the, in the fund. This, this fund allocates investments on US stocks, non US stocks, bonds, and others, having 33, 33.99%, 37.37%, 24.69%, and 0.45%, respectively. Uh, most of its portfolio goes to giant size market cap with 63.28% and large market cap size accounts for 29.50% of the, port the portfolio. Um, the, um, the fund has the greatest percentage of investments in the financial sector which is composed of 17.46% 17 and the other three sectors that follow the highest investments are the consumer defensive sector with 13.64% and the healthcare sector with 11.5% and also the energy sector, se sector with 9.9%. This fund uh, expense ratio is 1.44. The, um, the 12B1 charges account for 0.99% of all other fees of fees and expenses. The fund has a minimum investment requirement of two to fifty dollars, which is pretty low. The the JP Morgan fund um, allocation has a 3.42% uh, of cash. Um, the US stock and uh, non-US stock uh, have no percentage on this bond fund, obviously. And on the other hand, bond play the bonds play 96.39% of all the portfolio. If this uh, this this fund has a this mo put, sorry 20, 30.82% of the bonds belong to the government sector. 23.8 of the bonds a uh, percent of the bonds belong to the corporate sector, 41.5% to the secu securitized sector and 028 to the municipal sector. The charges for the JP Morgan fund uh, have a 12B1 of 0.25% uh, of all fees and charges. And the fund's expense ratio uh, is 0.74. The last mutual fund uh, was a Vanguard Institutional Index, which is a stock fund uh, which has a net asset value of $243.25. I really like this fund because it, what it tries to achieve is uh, to actually 
follow the index. They they don't try to um, outperform the ma the market. They actually try to follow it. So that's why they have a, a beta of one for the three, five, and ten year periods. Uh, it's a standard deviation. It's uh, ten point twenty three in a three year period, uh, which is exactly. Than, uh, than the S&P 500 index comparison in the Morningstar and they were also the exact same uh, at the five year period and in the 15 point uh, no and in the sorry in the five year period and in the 10 year period were exactly the same beta no sorry um, standard deviation was the same for both the index and the, the fund which shows how this fund tries to um, act the same way or flow the same way as the index. The Sharpe ratio for the three year period was 0.99 and the Sortino ratio for the three year period was 0.77 which again uh, they are they have the same um, ratios for uh, the in they have the same ratios as the index so this fund has the same exact same numbers for all the periods in Morningstar as an index. This fund, this fund's allocation has a 98.97% on a US stock. A non-US stock uh, represents 0.84% of the actual uh, total allocation. This fund has investments in a basic materials industries, consumer cyclical, financial services, and real estate. In the industries like communication services, it has a 3%. Uh, in energy, it has 5% of allocation. In industrials, it has 10% of allocation. In technology, it has 22% of allocation. And um, in um, healthcare, it has 13%. Utilities, 2, uh, 3%. Consumer defensive has Seven, uh, almost eight percent. I believe um, this is a well diver diver diversified. Uh, uh, when we talk, uh, yes, when we talk about diver diversification within stocks, I, be I believe this is well diversified within a type of uh, industries, so defensive, uh, cyclical, etc., which is a good thing. So you, so the fund can reduce risks. And the expense for for this fund was 0 0.0 no, 0 0.04 um, uh, ratio, which is very low compared to its benchmark. And uh, the charges uh, they they didn't have no uh, front end or back end or 12b1 um, charges at all. For derivatives, um, I'll be I'll be invest I'll be having some options. Um, this is to hedge uh, any uh, losses. So in order for me to, like an example, if I know that the market or certain uh, allocations I know that are going down, then I will set a, a put option on that so I can gain from the loss of uh, that stock, let's say for an example. And I believe having options uh, as part of uh, my portfolio can be less risky uh, for me, and will require, and they require less financial commit, uh, sorry, less financial commit commitment than equities. I believe uh, this portfolio will suit best uh, those people that are trying to conserve capital. Um, they're not short term, so people who want to invest in this portfolio will see will not want short term uh, gains will want um, medium to long term gains uh, not too long like a retirement account but not too short also and i consider myself an an average to moderate tolerance for risk because i'm not willing to risk uh, if i'm risking something i have to make sure that um, the risk reward that the risk is really low and the reward is really high if i want to risk something and um, that's about it uh, i hope you enjoy and have a good summer thank you very much